Yeah, so there are a lot of non-parametric tests. And uh, can someone tell me why in general we use non-parametric tests? Anyone? Can someone tell me why do we use non-parametric tests? When statistical rules are not followed, and the, in the sense the criteria of the statistics is not met, they use uh, non, uh, non-parametric yeah. tests. Uh, when the criteria so, of the non-parametric tests are usually used when you don't know the underlying data structure. For example, whether the data is normal, yeah. not normal, is it Poisson or anything? If you don't know those things, then you use uh, these non-parametric tests, which are which have a wide application because in most cases when you collect data, they don't uh, con conform to any kind of data structure that you might have seen, okay, especially when your data sizes are small. This is usually the case sometimes when logistics prevents you from getting a, a lot of data, data points. But okay, uh, so this tutorial will mainly uh, involve uh, some problems on uh, non-parametric tests. You can ask me questions as we go along. Okay, so the first question, I'll share my screen. Yeah, so the first question today is to do with exponential distributions. So the question says that 60 patients visit the outpatient ward in a hospital every day in an eight hour time period okay so on a particular day two and a half in the first two and a half hours no one comes okay what is you need to calculate what was the probability of that happening that no one came in the first two and a half hours okay for this so exponential distributions are used to calculate time intervals between random events the random event here is a patient arriving at the hospital. Now, what is the mean rate of patient arriving? How often, what is the average time difference between uh, two, any two patients? It can be calculated as total time period that is 8 hours divided by 60 patients. That comes out to be 0.13. So, 0.13 hours is the average duration between any two patients that arrive in the hospital. Now you need to calculate what is the probability that for the first 2.5 hours no one came and that is given by this expression. Okay? This expression is nothing but a cumulative distribution. You need to calculate cumulative probability that this event that no one comes for the first uh, 2.5 hours. It is given by 1 minus e power that is exponential power minus lambda. Lambda is nothing but m here. Okay? That's the mean. I can write this as lambda as well. Okay. Mean and uh, what is the value of x here? 2.5 hours. So note that both your m and x should be in the same unit. When you calculate the cumulative probability of that, that is when you calculate this equation after uh, substituting m and x, you get 0.277. So that is your probability that no one arrives in the first 2.5 hours. It's 0.277. So that was the first question. Uh, any doubts on this? Anyone? Can you hear me? Can you, sir, can you explain in X? Excel is a exponential distance, yeah. right? In, X, in Excel, is so we, we just did the first question where we needed to calculate uh, what is the probability that no patient arrives in the first 2.5 hours given that on the whole day 60 patients arrive in an 8 hour time period. Okay, so the lambda you calculate as 8 by 60 that is 0.13 hours, x is 2.5 and you just need to calculate the cumulative probability for the exponential distribution that is 1 minus x e power minus lambda x which gives you 0.277. Any doubts on this is just direct thing but just try to understand why the exponential distributions are used. They are used to model mostly time difference between any two events. Okay, the events here are the patients arrive. Okay, 
The second question, you are given, uh, uh, you have to, uh, there's, a, there's data regarding the heartbeat per minute of 10 mice. When they are given either uh, drug A or drug B, you need to tell me Hello. whether drug A or drug B are they equally good or equally, or is one better than the other in reducing the heart rate. Okay. Excuse me, sir. So what you have to do is, uh, you need to first write drug A and drug B, uh, write the data as it is in Excel or anywhere, and then rank each of the data. For example, I've, I've written drug A and, and drug B, what the values are also. And then I have uh, ranked the data with respect to its value, for example, 65 comes first. There are two 65. So I need to, what, what do I do when I have two equal values when ranking? I divide the rank by two. Okay, so for, suppose one and two, I, I add the ranks one plus two and divide it by two, I get 1.5. So th the rank of the first two is 1.5, 1.5. Okay, then you have rank three for the third value, rank four for the this value and you do on. When you have more than one value, you divide the ranks by two or three, depending on how many values have that ha are equal. For example, if I have three values equal at the fifth rank, I would do five plus six plus seven by three. Okay, but here I have just two values, so I've done five plus six divided by two for both 77 and 77. That comes from A and B. Okay, so first I arrange all my data in ascending order and then rank them with their corresponding groups. And then I calculate just the ranks of A, the sum of the ranks of A, that is 77. So only for values that belong to A, I calculate the ranks of those and that I get as 77. And for ranks of B, I get 133, okay? So after I do that, I look up a table for uh, this uh, Wilcoxon sum rank test. Uh, Wilcoxon sum rank test table. Okay. Okay. Maybe it's not a good one. At alpha, at the significance value of 0 0.05. Okay. And so, yeah. Now, both my sample size are 10 and 10. So, first for 0 0.05, I have uh, 10. No, this is not the one that I want. Yeah, this is the table. Yeah. For 10 and 10, my critical value is 87. Okay. That's what I have. But if you see, this is the uh, the lower and that this is the upper thing, okay? Uh, the lower value, the, the lower group and the higher group. I'm comparing that. And it's 10 and 70, uh, for 10, 10 it is 87, 10 size of 10 is 87. But whereas our, our uh, rank of A is just 77. So which is less than 87, which is less than uh, 87, sorry, uh, wait, not this, one thing is, yeah, so 70, 77 is less than 87, that which means that drug B is better than A at, uh, sorry, increasing the, at the, sorry, increasing the heart rate, okay, did you get that, any doubts on this? Oops, I think my, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. I can hear you now, I was muted. Uh, sorry, my, I muted my computer, but any doubts on this or the previous question? So previous mm -hmm. question, I had doubts, sir. Okay, so sorry, uh, my com computer was muted. Yeah, what was the doubt in the previous question? Sir, you said the mean equal to 8 by 60, right? Yeah. The uh, lambda is 1 by mean, actually, according to the formula. 
yes yes so that actually you have to uh, oh yeah I, i agree because uh, another uh, arpit sir uh, told uh, in the formula it's given mean equal to 1 by lambda have uh, in the professor lecture it is given saturday session yes 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 oh now i remember yeah yeah so mean is 1 by lambda but here so that is 60 by 8 actually so actually this is uh, lambda is 60 by 8 no no no, no, no. lambda is 8 by 60 here uh, lambda is uh, 8 by 60 yeah mean is 60 by 8 sorry mean is 60 by 8 and uh, lambda is 8 by 60 yes you are correct so this is actually lambda which is 1 by mean i agree lambda lambda is 1 lambda is 40 by 8 I mean, correct me uh, if I'm wrong. No, no, no. no. Lambda is eight by sixty. According to this problem, it is eight by sixty. So you need to calculate. So actually, the mean is how many people arrive per hour. That is the mean rate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And one by one by that mean is your lambda. Okay, it's eight by sixty. Mm. Yes, yes. Mean mean is eight by forty. No mean uh, is forty uh, by eight number of people per. Uh, yes, yes, correct. Forty by eight. Mean is forty by eight. Rate, mean okay. rate of which people lambda come. Lambda is one by mean, correct. Okay. okay. So lambda that's per hour. Your okay. lambda is just in hours. So what is the mean rate? That tells you the mean rate. Sixty by eight mean rate at every hour. How many people arrive? If you do one by that, that is. One by sixty by eight, that is eight by sixty. You get lambda, which is point one three. Okay. Sir, can you show it in Excel, sir? Uh, so in Excel, so I have uh, I I know all my parameters. Hopefully. So sorry, my computer was muted. I was wondering why I couldn't hear. Equals uh, exp exponential distribution of you need to give your x that is two point five you need to give your lambda that is zero point how much was it one three and uh, cumulative because we are calculating from zero to two point five hours uh sorry what I have to write two okay you get point two seven seven. Okay, you just have to substitute your uh, lambda and whatever. Okay, so be very careful. Your m is mean rate that is sixty by eight, as you said, that's correct. And lambda is one by that, that's eight by sixty. Sorry for the typo. Sir, sir, please repeat the Excel one calculation. So Excel is uh, you just have to exponential distribution. You have to give your x that is two point five hours. That's your random variable. Point one three is your lambda, and uh, this is your. Uh, and you have to calculate true value, uh, cumulative distribution. So uh, basically, it is one minus this this thing. Uh, what you call this formula? You are calculating this entire expression, okay? Using the cumulative. So that is. <laughs> Point two seven seven. Okay. Any doubts? No, sir. Understood. Okay. Uh, the next question was this. I we are halfway through it. So this was data between E and B, and you need so. So you need to basically say. Uh, Which uh, first calculate the sum of ranks of drug A and drug B using this, and then say uh, which of this has a more effect, okay? More effect on the uh, uh, heartbeat of the uh, thing, uh, whatever mice. So you just have to first write your table as this: what is A, what is B, and then sort all your values of A and B. Okay, together, and then rank them. When you have two or more ranks, then you divide by the number of values that have the same value. For example, here, 
both my first and second value are 65, so I do 1 plus 2 because those are my ranks divided by 2. I get 1.5, 1.5. Then I go, this is next number is 3, next number is 4, and then again 5 and 6 have the same value, so 5 plus 6 divided by 2, like that. Okay. And then I just calculate the ranks of A, whichever values of A, I just, uh, for values of A, I calculate the ranks, sum them up, I get 77 for ranks of A. Similarly, for ranks of B, I sum them up. Only for C, you can see only B values have included their ranks. Sum them up. And then I check, I, I have my lower and higher ranks. So A is lower and B is higher. Both are of size 10. So I go and look up a table. Uh, look up a table for Wilcox and some rank test. So lower is 10, higher is 10. And that the critical value is 87. So my value has to be lesser than that for B to be, for the higher to be greater, to, uh, this, this B to be greater than A. Okay, which is actually the case. Uh, I have, uh, sorry, my 70, my A is 77, which is less than 87. So I can say that B is better than A. Okay, that drug B is better than A at increasing the heartbeat or what. Yeah. So that is question two. Someone just I think, uh, got me more confused. Okay, no. Okay, then the last question is uh, again you are given uh, uh, patients' data before and after they have been administered a drug. You need to say whether the drug had any effect. Okay. So what I do is I tabulate my column again. This is before and after, and then I calculate the difference. Okay. I calculate the difference and then I sort those uh, calculate the difference and just take the absolute value of that. Okay. And then I sort the absolute values. Uh, I first uh, sort them and then I rank them. So I rank them, it goes from 1 to 13. And I also preserve the sign that is if it, before minus after was greater, it's positive. If after was greater than before, it's negative. And I multiply the ranks with the sign, whether it was negative or positive, with each of the ranks. So this is a signed rank test. It's called the Wilcoxon signed rank test because each of the ranks have a sign associated with it. It's positive if before was greater than after and negative if after was greater than before. Okay. After I do that, I sum all the positives and all the negatives separately. All the positive ranks and all the negative ranks separately. And I get this. And now I take the minimum of, of both the positive and negative ranks. It's 7. Now I, this is given for 13 samples. Right? I look up a table for Wilcoxon's signed rank test for 13 at 0 0.05. So that is the value is 17. Okay, n equals 13. For n equals 13, the, this value is 17. My value should be lesser than that because I've taken the minimum. Okay. Which is actually true, it's 7. Minimum of both my positive and negative uh, sum of ranks was 7. So it's lesser than 17, which means that drug works. And drug works at uh, changing the uh, uh, whatever, bank of, uh, sorry, blood count of the bacteria. Okay. So did I say that? It's actually uh, reducing. Hello? Yes. Uh, sir, I think so someone is meeting, waiting in the meeting. Someone is meet what? Waiting, wait, waiting in the meet. Oh, yeah. waiting. Yeah, yeah. I can't see that screen. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, any any doubts you guys? So you just have to so this is similar to your paired T test, okay? Where you compare the effect of some drug before and after you give the drug, okay? This is before and after. It's again a paired thing. And I calculate the difference between them, calculate the absolute values of the difference between them, rank these things, and then use the sign also. If it was greater before, then it's plus. If it's it was greater after, then it's a minus. Okay. And then I say whether the drug has any effect or not. So I calculate the minimum of both the positive and the negative. 
and if the uh, minimum of that and compare it with uh, a standard table for n equals 13 and uh, if that if my minimum is lesser than 13 with 17 here if it's lesser than that then uh, i actually what you call i say that the drug works okay so the answer for this was in the options there is some option yeah so yes antibiotic has an effect on reducing the drug bacterial count so the drug works okay did everyone get that all the three questions so the first question was just on exponential distributions the second was on Wilcoxon sum rank test and the second was Wilcoxon signed rank test where you actually put some signs to the rank test. Okay. Very simple. So first question, can you go to the first question, sir? Okay. I, I'll put up this video on YouTube. You can look. We have discussed this. So here you just have to calculate lambda, which is 8 by 60. This is the mean time taken between two patients when they are arriving, it's 8 by 60. 8 is the number of total time period and 60 are the number of patients that come. So that's lambda. And then x is 2.5, you have to calculate this. Okay. Is that all right? Sir, a doubt is there. Yes. Uh, in uh, sign rank test. Yes. You are going to take minimum, right? Yes. Of the, of the absolute value sum. Yes. And you are comparing with table value. I'm taking comparing the table value. Yes. In a parametric test, you are going to use greater than. If it is greater than, you will reject null hypothesis. If it, in the in the parametric test, okay, like a t test, yes. If you if the calculated value t is greater than the table value, you reject then I null reject hypothesis. the null hypothesis. Yes. If this here is opposite. Yeah. Why it is opposite? Okay, the thing here is uh, how do I say? So you're taking the minimum here, okay? First thing. So that has to. I am trying to think. Uh, Usually, in parametric test, we'll use a greater than symbol for accepting alternate hypothesis. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here, when you're taking this sum rank, so you're already sort of telling how far one is from the other okay okay uh, so in some sense for example uh, here 133 and 77 that means oh sorry this is b so, in, so just by looking at this you can say that b has a higher value because it has a higher ranks the sum is higher, so uh, most of the values are ranked higher for B. You can you can somehow say that. Okay. Now, in sign rank, uh, Wilcoxon sign rank test. Uh, this is absolute, all, uh, Yeah, this is also similar. This, this is also similar. Wherein, so here, without using the sign, you're telling it. Okay, whether one is better than the other. Okay. Uh, here also, here, here also you take the, it should be lesser than the, uh, 77, the lower thing should be lesser than 87, the critical value. Here also the minimum should be lesser than 70. Okay. So in some sense, if it just tells you how different these two things are. Okay, if, if my minimum was greater than 17, that means these two things are not very different. Okay. The negative and positive, they're almost having the same effect. The after and the before thing are almost similar. They are either increasing or decreasing the equal amount. So if you, if I, I think the converse of it, which is not entirely mathematically correct, but if, you, if I take the maximum of this and this, the table would be different. Then I would have to say then that has to be greater than some critical value. If I take the maximum of positive and negative. But here, since I have taken minimum, that has to be lesser than the critical. It's, it is sort of telling that the, your minimum should be very extreme compared uh, to, uh, both your positive and negative should be so extreme that uh, so close to zero actually that your two uh, treatments are two groups are different. 
Did you get that? When you use parametric test, uh, that calculated t value yeah. is greater than t critical, we reject null hypothesis, right? In parametric, yes. That means the value of seeing t is the probability is very less. That's what I Yes, guess. yes, yes. It's the same thing here. But the here, the but here the, uh, it is opposite. Yes, it is opposite because you're calculating the minimum of that. You're not taking, after calculating the difference, okay, you are calculating whether there was a positive change, negative change, and then taking a minimum. Whereas in the parametric test, you just calculate the difference. Okay, it's directly proportional to the difference itself. Here, after taking the difference, you're ranking them. And if the minimum of those ranks, the positive and negative ranks is lesser than something. So, it's basically saying whether uh, it is uh, negative or wh whether, yeah, whether the minimum after taking, you're not taking the magnitudes themselves, you're taking the sign of the magnitudes. Okay, it's, it's actually a very different mathematical treatment. But I don't have a reason for that. There is directly proportional to the difference. So, greater the difference, more extreme will be your t-value. And that is why more is the effect. Here, you're ranking them. You're, 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 not, you're not taking the magnitudes themselves. You are accounting for them by just ranking them, but not directly the magnitude. And then you take the minimum of that. Which if you take the maximum, then you have to say greater than or something. But here, you're taking minimum than of that. That's why it should be less than the critical value. Yeah. So because you're taking the minimum, it has to be lesser than the critical value. But the comparisons are very different actually between para. You can't actually compare them directly. Yeah. I don't really I have an doubt? answer. But some. Can I ask a doubt? Yes. Uh, sir, you said you will upload this video on the YouTube. Yes. Uh, is it on the Google Drive where that uh, uh, Google uh, Sheet uh, which is there or somewhere else you are uploading this? So, the we, you, uh, link, both the links are there on that Google Sheet that I upload. Okay. The uh, PPT is there in the file folder. Okay. Uh, PPT is there in the, sorry? In the, link, in the link provided, if you click on that link, you should get the PPT. Okay, because Saturday session, he said he will upload it by, the, by tonight. I didn't find it in the Google Drive. So okay. I'm driving back home now. I'm okay. listening to you, but I, you know, you need to sit and work it out. So I just wanted to know if I can get those this videos. The videos, so the video, the links are there on YouTube. At least my part, Amir Sadik, the videos are there on YouTube. So I'll upload today's videos. Only five weeks videos are there. Today's, oh. This Saturday session video is only five weeks video are there. Okay. Today this is my sixth week. So today after th this class, I'll upload the video. Where in the Google Drive? On YouTube, on YouTube. And the link will be there on that uh, Excel sheet that will be provided. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah. I didn't find it, so I asked. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Today's video is still not made. I'll, I'll just upload it maybe in two, three hours after the class. Yeah, but... Sure, thank you. <coughs> but yeah. Regarding why you take lesser than here, because you're calculating minimum, you take lesser than, but yeah, that's the only answer I have. I don't know why they have not considered taking the maximum of these ranks. Maybe it's mathematically something incorrect or something. So the day minimum it has to be lesser than the critical value in all the parametric tests. The lower the, the lower value or the minimum value should always be lesser than the critical. Yeah. Perhaps. How do we how do we ensure that it is non-parametric? I mean No, you have to check first. You have to check whether uh, any so you plot the data and you see whether it fits some Gaussian, yeah, Poisson, yeah, distribution, all those if things. If it doesn't follow normal distribution, it means normal non-parametric. No, 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 no. You can actually this course just limits you to uh, uh, normal, but Data can be Poisson, data can be gamma distributed, Weibull distributed, a lot of things. And then you need to compare using those. No, no, if I plot the drug A, drug B. Yeah. If I plot the drug A, drug B on histogram. Yeah. If I don't get normal curve, it, it means it's not parametric. No. For the course, for this course, yeah, because we are not taught you other things. 
but uh, there are these Poisson distribution, exponential distribution, Poisson distribution, so many things which are parametric. And then you can compare your, you, you have to, it's, it's not part of your course, but there are tests to compare Poisson data, uh, binomial data and all those things. No, no, what I'm asking is, yeah. we want the data set. Yeah. How do we ensure it is non-parametric? How can I ensure that I want to carry some rank test? So, so yeah, that's what you have to say. You have to know, have a knowledge about all the other distributions and say, okay, it's not matching any of these. So then how do you, how do you ensure, how do you ensure visual, uh, it's a graphical, uh, graphically. Easiest way is graphical. Easiest way is graphical. Uh, if I plot drug A, drug B, yeah. histogram, yeah. If I don't get a normal curve, it means non-parametric. No, that's or, what I'm saying. No, you. there could be other parameters that could be fitting it, or other functions that could be fitting it. It's not It's not done part of your course, but there is something there's something called curve fitting, and you can uh, fit different kinds of distributions. And you have to see whether it fits any of those. If not, then you do a non-parametric test. But yeah, for this course, at, as far as this course is concerned, yeah, if it's not normal, then you do a non-parametric test. But if you do a little more of statistics, then you realize there are other tests which for other distributions, which is not just for normal. So yeah. But yeah, for this course, if it's not normal, then if you do this uh, the question, the question you can ask will uh, ensure that it is non-parametric. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I but if the question it. doesn't say anything, only data set is given. Ah, so then <laughs> yeah, so, so then, in so, that case, I, I I don't know whether I can I should carry T test. So carry, yeah, no, uh, then then you'll have to plot the data. It's, it, that is where you do real statistics, where you actually see whether your data follows some pattern. If, if yeah, it follows, sure that pattern is non-parametric or parametric. That that is uh, graphically. Yeah, so means, so yeah, I mean it's not it's not done. So actually, what you do is curve fitting, where you ask the computer to fit any parametric distribution to it to your data. If there is something called optimizations and things like that, uh, but yeah, it's not part of your course. So yeah, if it's not normal, you assume it's non-parametric, but uh, that's actually not the end of it. That's not entirely new. Yeah, you should look for other distributions which can fit your data. Because that's the only reason we have so many DSS, not normal. There are so many distributions. The only reason they have been made is because to do statistical tests. One of the big reasons. And you can check the variance. Uh, var the variance yeah, is the variance are uh, equal or not and things like that. But that is just very basic test. Normality is just one type of test. You can do other two tests. Uh, the, sorry? Yeah? Uh, no, I think uh, actually you know, for non-parametric tests, uh, Professor uh, Mukesh Dobe's uh, video gives yeah. certain criteria, isn't it? That it should be ordinal and it should be different from a normal distribution. Yes. Uh, like that, there are two, three criteria which uh, they state for... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Test to be used. Yeah, yeah. So ordinal is one thing, but uh, you have to actually. This is just through practice. You'll have to fit, see whether your data follows some distributions, and then. And also it. depends on what you're trying to find out, right? Like, uh, is there a significant difference between one treatment and the other? Yeah. Or it, is it just a difference between the means of two populations? Yes. Or yes. Is the difference yes. between the variance? All it depends on the question, also, I guess. Yeah. No. Actually. It, it, I would say it depends less on the question and more about the data underlying data structure. Okay. okay. For no, example, question as in uh, what we are trying to find out. Yeah, yeah. What you are trying to find out is uh, you are trying to basically find whether some treatment is different different from the control. Okay, that is usually the over overarching question that you ask in statistics. But that the kind of test you do will depend on the data itself, how it's distributed. If it's normally distributed, you do all your p-test, t-test, ANOVA. If it's not normally distributed, then you look for other things. And then there, there are other things called general linear models. And there are, if you don't satisfy all of this, then you do the non-parametric test. Okay. So there are a lot more to statistics than just a t-test and ANOVA, which is, is, I mean, this is a preliminary course. Yeah, that's but, right. Uh, but if you do all, uh, if you actually, if you that book that I mentioned, Casella and Berger has the maths behind most statistics. It's like a very basic textbook, but has if you apply, use that properly, then you can do a lot more. So that is all kinds of distributions actually. 
I uh, also just wanted to, uh, I think when I just was able to get the connection, you yeah. were expecting that uh, question one, if you could just display that slide. Yeah. Question one. Uh, yeah, so probability is one minus exponential of lambda uh, of minus. Yeah, it's a, it's a cumulative. So this is actually capital F, capital P. It's cumulative probability. Okay. So uh, X is equal to 2.5 uh, hours. Okay. Yeah. So if you just put that in Excel, if you put exponential distribution x as 2.5 lambda as 0.13 and cumulative that this value as true, it will give you the cumulative probability. You get 0.27. Lambda is 0.13. Uh, yeah, it's 8 by 60. Yeah, it's 8 by 60. It is the. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. 8 by 60. Yes. Okay. 0.13. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. So one minus exponential of uh, minus lambda comma x. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last time. Lambda uh, into x. Sorry. Explained us uh, where the probability is equal to x greater than equal to small x, like that. It was. Yeah. That, that that gives you the cumulative probability. Okay. Uh, which gives you okay. When, when you do exactly x equals x, then I just do I make this as false. When it, when this is equality at at some sort of. Probability at 2.5 hours, whether you get a patient or not, uh -huh. is this. If I just do the false thing, it gives me this. Okay. Okay. So it's the same thing as saying epsilon to the power of uh, minus lambda x. Yeah, that, that is the false thing when I do the false. Uh, x, uh, x epsilon accidentally, I said epsilon. I, yeah. I meant the small e. So yeah, yeah. Epsilon. Yeah, yeah. So this is the cumulative. Only this is the PDF. Only this. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any and questions? Any further questions? And I think on that variable uh, reliability function, uh, there was some discussion last time. Okay. Uh, uh, which uh, is akin to the uh, problem that we have, uh, the problem uh, which is the second one in week uh, six assignment, in that uh, where shape and scale were discussed. Okay. I just wondered if we could just go over it once more. Just okay. This is this week's assignment. Uh, yeah, that is uh, this week's assignment. Something like it. Uh, I don't know if you have in an earlier uh, session. Uh, uh, maybe we we will just discuss it briefly. Maybe. Yeah. Sir, other people are waiting. <clears throat> uh, waiting. Okay. Thank you. I can't see the screen, so unless someone tells me. But yeah, uh, uh, the sign in, what is? I agree that uh, the Bible and all its things were a little mathematically intense. I mean, for, with respect to what you have been doing so far in this course. Actually, Man with Me and Wilcoxon, I'm familiar with. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, Bible is a. Bible is actually not. Uh, it is used, but uh, not in like most places. But yes, you see, that is one kind of again distribution that you use, which is not like apart from non parametric. The shape and scale for a biomaterial design are uh, over 1000. Which design is more reliable? So yeah, you just have to substitute the values of uh, beta and uh, eta, and you calculate the reliability. So that function I forgot. Uh, wait. Okay. R. R. So R of t equals I. There's some formula I forgot. So you just have to substitute this and that, and you compare which of that has a greater value. Okay. Fine. That is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think. Okay. Anything else? If not, we'll conclude the class, and I'll see you all next week. Yeah. Sir. Sir. Yes. Yes. Tell me.
uh, in the problem sol solving uh, session uh, the uh, uh, title given on the nptel profile ki problem solving you can go through problem solving session mm -hmm. when i opened it there is a excel sheet in that excel sheet there is a column 6 that is presentation folder link yes when we click on that it says ki you don't have the access ask for the access and since last i think 2 3 weeks i am asking the air to re requesting you same guys thing with me okay okay to pass the I'll, see they are the problem is then. I'll see what the problem is Hopefully, next time that should not happen. Yeah? Okay, sir. Okay. And also, the these things are there on YouTube. You can also see them on YouTube. Yeah? I'll, I'll upload sir, today's video. So, uh, sir, what is the uh, thing in, you mean, how is it in YouTube? Uh, any keyword? No, no, link. I, the links are there. You just have to click on the link. It goes to the video directly. It's uh, for the YouTube link, but what what about the presentation? Yeah, for the link, I'll see what the what the problem is. If there is some access issue, I'll. Okay, okay. Thanks for that. I'll I'll do that by the next class. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Yes. Sir.